I'm going to create a book for my bookcase scene and uh, so the, the whole series is probably going to be another video after this one because it's going to take a little while not long or anything it's very easy to do uh, there's a couple of different ways to make books uh, one easy way is just to have the default cube there and scale it in the Z like that look down from the top get the sort of dimensions that you want something like that let's say and then just to in edge selection number two just select those edges and control b to bevel pull press c to clamp so that when they hit they don't overlap do that and then roll your mouse up to get a curve and you've got the basics of a book there um, but i don't like that curve that much it's, it's a little bit too much for me so what i'm going to do is i'm going to bring in a circle and i'll go for 24 vertices I'm going to look from the front and I'm going to rotate X90 and I'm going to grab all of these vertices here and delete them and then I'm going to take this and I'm just going to scale it in the X just to tame that curve a little bit and then select those two vertices, E to extrude, pull it out and you can start to see the, the bottom or top of, of, a, of a book, something like that and then I'm going to take this and I'm going to extrude it out like that until I get the approximate dimensions of the book. So I get less of a curve and I also get tighter uh, edges there so I can make the little indent I'll show you in a moment. So then what I'm gonna do is an edge selection, shift alt and click there, I have to make a face, shift alt and click there, I have to make a face, and there I have to make a face. And now I can do the paper. So three for face selection and select these three there. I'd inset, hold shift and pull in just to get the thickness of the cover that you want. And then E, Alt S and pull to pull it in a little bit. Now you can curve the paper and do stuff like that. I'm not going to bother with that. What I think I will do is leave it there and then think about something like a, some uh, indent. So I think what I'll do is uh, I'm going to, let's say, drop an edge loop there and on the bottom. It's not gonna go all the way through. Shift Alt and click both of them so I can move them both at the same time. I'm gonna move them down there, all right? And now I'm going to Shift Alt and click here. Is that what I wanna do? No, you know what I'll do? I'm gonna drop an edge loop there. I'm gonna drop another edge loop on the bottom there so they're in the same position. Take those. And now I'm going to control B to bevel. I'm going to pull them apart. I just want two. I'll hold shift if I have to. I just want a space that I can indent and I want some supporting edges on the outside. So now I'm going to take this and go SZ and just pull it in a little bit to create the, the indent. Now I'm going to shade smooth and I'm going to add a bevel on top of that. I'll probably go for two and let's see we can add a weighted normal and normals auto smooth and i might clean that up a little bit we'll see uh, let's go let's see let's let's break the paper out actually i want this piece this piece and this piece p to break it out that'll change that a little bit and this is a little tight here so i'm going to shift alt and click there shift alt and click there and i'm going to scale this in the x to make it there and that'll bring back my bevel i just want a little indentation there that's all i need that's that's better it's brought back my bevel okay and this one what do we got we got everything except maybe yeah we've got everything and this one what did i do did i turn that off no everything's good Okay, so we have that, the basis of a book. It's a rather thick book. Now let's do a couple of other stuff on the binding. So let's bring an edge loop up here and we will split this one into two and we'll bring another edge loop down here. It's not quite the same distance. So now I'm gonna shift alt and click all of these and let's control B and pull and split it in like that. But to do this, I'll need some warning edges again. So I'm gonna drop an edge loop there and there and there. Keep that one selected and take those two and those two. Control B, split them again, 
pull them out not not right to the edge you know, something like something like that and then three for face selection I'm going to come up here and I'm going to select the last sort of big you know, quad there and I'm going to come down to the bottom and I'll select the last one there and I just hit control control by the way to get the whole row so that select that one and then hold down control and click and then shift to click on that one hold down control and you get the whole row do the same thing up here shift to get that one into the selection and control so I've got all of that selected and now I'm going to press alt s just alt s not e and alt s alt s and push and just see how far out you want to come the bevel on is acting funny so something like like that okay that might even be too much but I think I'm okay with that all right so that's basically the book there so now we're going to go over to the UV editing and I'll just throw the cavity shader on one more time just for the fun of it and we're going to unwrap this and let's do let's say let's do the paper first so come into the paper the bevel is on I don't care about that I can just leave it select those two edges and control E mark scene and then control L to select it all and then just U unwrap and I'll get this I just want to make sure that that is a separate piece and it is and we got that one and we got that one okay I'm going to take those and I'm going to scale them down I don't need them quite that big to scale that down I'm going to come over to the the cover of the book and I'm going to shift alt and click here shift alt and click there and shift alt and click there and shift alt and click there control e mark seam select the whole thing you unwrap and I'll have this now it's nice if this is straight this thing okay and not sort of bent in like that so I'm going to use UV squares for this which is a free add-on to help straighten UVs and I'm just going to click here to grid by shape and that'll straighten it and that's it so you can just search for UV squares and install that in blender if you want to do this I'm going to scale this down rotate 90 to have it on the side so basically you've got the cover here the cover there and this is all the binding so we'll uh, we'll see how that all goes I'm just going to scale it up a little bit more we're doing this all with just like a default material or no material all on one UV I'm going to select everything and then I'm going to just try to get this stuff a little bit bigger if I can and I'm not packing or anything I'm just gonna do it like that and I want a little bit of room so I can paint on this or select parts uh, without any trouble so I think we're okay let me just double check that that's like that and come in and merge by distance nah, there's nothing to get rid of I'm not going to apply the bevel modifier I'm just going to leave it like that yeah, the only thing is I think this might be a little bit too much but anyways that's okay I'm not gonna you're not gonna see it up close anyhow so we've got our UVs done we're going to save that so this is bookcase book one I don't know how many of these I'll do we'll see and uh, we are ready to export that as an FBX over in substance painter I'm gonna go file new switch this to OpenGL I do not I am not using the UV tile workflow so make sure that's unchecked select bookcase book one there it is bring it in and you can see the UVs down there pretty much how how it looked before we have to bake the mesh map so let's do that so over here in texture set settings let's choose bake mesh maps I'm going to choose 2k uncheck ID and thickness and bake doesn't take long and there it is okay let's add some textures on it and there's just one default material so all right in materials I'm going to search for leather and you should have this one artificial leather I'm going to take that and drop it on and it's going to go on everything and that's what it's going to look like you could see it here on the UVs as well and let's just come in here and change the base color just drop it to sort of a dark red like that maybe a little bit less saturated all right so I don't want that on the paper area is either so I'm going to add a black mask come over here to polygon fill and switch to the UV chunk and just start dragging on there and that's it so it's gone only on the cover area and not on 
the uh, on the pages and that looks fine for the kind of book that I want to make so we'll go with that so let's that's going to be I'm going to call that cover you can put these into folders if you like uh, some people would want to do that but anyways let's come back to the materials and to make the paper I'm going to use wood I'm going to grab this wood rough you should have that one I'm going to drag that in over there and I don't want it everywhere I only wanted paper so add a black mask polygon fill and UV chunk and I'm just going to drag over these so it's on there but it looks like wood so far so let's fix that so over here on the main layer um, we're going to come up to here and the scale. I'm going to, I want to change it in, in, in this dimension here and not and not this one. So I'm going to uncheck the, uh, the lock there and I'm going to make this around 20 for my model. And that's going to give me the appearance of, of paper to some extent. And I could just change the color a little bit, make it a little bit more old sort of, and you know, we can fiddle with, with the color at some point. But that's that, that's that. So we've got our basic cover and our basic paper in there. Okay, we'll put some dirt on that in a bit. All right, the next thing I want to do is I want to do a bit of a, of a leather binding, but in black, in a, di in a different color than, than my, my main cover. So I'm going to reset this. I'm going to come back to leather, and I'm going to grab this artificial leather again, and I'm going to use it as it is. All right, but I'm going to add a black mask and I want to paint that. So I'm going to add a paint layer. And now I'm just going to leave that there so we can see it. I'm going to uh, focus on uh, this, on the UVs basically. And I'm going to come to my alphas and choose a square. It's easy, I find it a little bit easier to, to draw with. But I want to add, make some changes to this most likely. I think I do down here. The size space, I'm going to switch to texture so that when I come here, it doesn't change. My brush doesn't change size all the time. And alignment, I'm also going to put that on UV. I'll leave it on tangent warp for a second, or wrap, sorry. Let's see what it, if, if we get it on the paper. You Sometimes we'll have that. I can't easily, actually, let's zoom in. I can't easily see my binding, so I'll try it like that and let's just come up and you can see it's done some funny stuff there and it's even added it on the paper so i'm going to switch this to uv and let's try that again all right i get a much nicer um i get a much nicer edge on that and it's not going on to there and you're not going to see the top and the bottom at the same time. So I'm not going to be too worried about getting them exact. I could do a little bit better probably. So I'll do that. I'm just sort of looking here that they're kind of equal. And I'm just trying to decide. I think I may want it to go past the binding thing. I'm not sure. Ah, now one thing I, I should note <laughs> is I'm getting some height information that I may not want. And so I'm going to come back. That was actually good that that happened. I'm going to uncheck height and then come back to my paint layer. Let's try that again. Uh, okay, so I think that's a bit better. A bit more what I want. And uh, let's get the middle there. I went up a little bit too high and I did write on the paper. And uh, something like that. And I like having the texture come through it. Uh, I wanna try just one thing where I come out quite a bit further. I may end up doing that so it goes past the indent. So I'm gonna do that on the other side as well. And you can just sort of look here and see if I can get it kind of equal that's close enough for what i want to do all right i want to do some gold trim on here and so i'm going to take this gold pure and i'm going to drag this up as another layer and i'm going to change the name to trim and what you'll notice is that there is some height or normal information coming through this gold layer from the layers below and if you ever don't want that i happen to like that because it's kind of like painting in gold on to you know onto my uh, leather um but if you wanted to get rid of it 
you got to do a couple things. So first of all, I'm going to come into that material and I'm going to turn on. There is no height information here. I'm going to turn this on and I can see there's a grunge map in here. I'm going to get rid of that, but I still see the information coming through. And so what you need to do is with the height turned on and nothing here in the height, you need to come over to these channels here, turn on height, and you'll see that that standard blending mode is linear dodge, which is an adding type mode or blending mode. I'm going to switch this to normal. And now there is nothing there. Now, sometimes you will also have to go to the normal and do this because there's normal information coming through. I can switch that back to base color, just standard. So now it's nice and smooth and there's no influence of the underlying stuff. But if I close that or hide it, I mean, it's st it is still there. And you'll see what I mean. Uh, maybe I'll try it with the smooth and I'll, we'll see what it looks like. I'm gonna add a black mask and I'm going to add a paint layer because I wanna paint on this. I'm just gonna reduce this for a moment and let's just draw, all right? You can see that I still have the grain and the normal or, or height information here, but this is smooth. Let's do something better than that. Let's just try a square here, just to see this. See how smooth that is? But you still get the height information uh, on the other layers. Okay, so I kind of like that, so maybe I will go with that this time. I'm gonna reduce the size of this quite a bit and I'm going to draw a line. I'm holding shift and control, and I'm gonna draw a line like that. And I think I'm gonna draw another one, maybe down here, all right. And then I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller, and I'm gonna draw another one, maybe here. Yeah, okay, like that. Now, they don't seem to be even right here. All right, so the way I'm gonna solve that, and I'm just gonna increase my brush, I'm gonna to go to the eraser here, and I've got my square alpha, I believe, right now. Okay, actually, let me do, uh, let me do a square. And I'm just going to go like this, hold down shift and control, and cut them. And let's, let's see exactly where I want them to be. Yeah, it's probably pretty close to where I want. I think that's probably okay. All right, so I've got some lines in there now. Rather thick lines. That's all right. And let's see. I switch back to the brush. And let's see if I want to do something here. Yeah, but maybe I'll do make it really small. that and like that okay so looking pretty good so far I guess I hope all right so now I want to put a little bit of of um, decoration I guess on the cover of this all right so let's do this I'm gonna stay on this layer I may actually come back here and let's try turning off the height and seeing what it looks like. That looks fine. I, I like it when it comes through a little bit. All right. Yeah, I think I maybe I'll keep it like that. So it's up to you which way you want to do this. Yeah, it's just like... All right, so for a design on this, I'm gonna leave it just like that. I'm gonna work on here. I'm gonna work on the same paint layer. You can add another paint layer if you want, and I'm going to bring in a design that um, I got from the internet under textures, alphas. I think it's this one here. It's gotta be white on black. So I'm gonna bring that in and define it as an alpha to the current session. And I've got it right here. I'm gonna go into the properties and drop that into the stencil. All right, I'm gonna do this curly one here at the top. So let's do that. Let's just get it the right size by pressing S and right mouse button. S and right mouse button. A little bit smaller. Get it into position. About there 
and then paint over it. And if you happen to go down to there, all right, you can just either delete or you can uh, erase. So I've got that. And I may put one at the bottom as well. And just move it down and do it in the same orientation, pretty much. Do another one down here just to close it off. All right, I'm going to delete that stencil. And here's what I've got. I don't need them on the back, just on the front there. Good, we're almost done. I'm just gonna put some text on this. You can put other designs if you like. So let's do that. And the text I'm going to do on the same layer again. And I'm gonna to come to my alphas and I'm gonna type in font. And I'm gonna go for this font Libra, I think it is. And I am going to scroll till I find the box. There's the text box. And uh, I'm gonna call this Psychopathy of, Psychopathy of, no, Psychopathy and the Criminal Mind. Let's see how that fits. Okay, don't worry that it's cut off right now. All right, so what you do in that case is you decrease the size here until it fits in the circle and then you hold left uh, control or hold control and right mouse button. And if that's not enough, you can change it here. But let's see. Let's see what that looks like if that goes in there. Uh, maybe a little bit more central. It doesn't have to be perfectly centered. Psychopathy and the criminal mind. Yeah, and then maybe underneath that, I would say something like in brackets, uh, 100 patients, uh, what? 100 patients reviewed. But that makes any sense, but I'm just gonna uh, reduce the size here and just to have something else. Yeah, okay, it's like a textbook, okay? It's a copy thing in the criminal mind, 100 patients reviewed, and then maybe I'll put the text over here. So I'm going to turn to the side here. I'm gonna switch to orthographic and snap it into that side side view and I'm gonna write the text again or the title psychopathy and all right psychopathy and the criminal mind and now I'm gonna come over here and let's see I'm over there I can just do this I suppose now nah, okay so if it's having trouble doing this we're gonna come back to those uh, here let's try tangent warp let's see if that's doing better and it is so psychopathy and the human and the criminal mind can be there yeah that's okay yeah and maybe we'll write like um a year like uh 2017 i don't know yeah 2017 and that one we'll try uh let's see Yeah, like that. Okay, I'm going to come out of orthographic back to perspective. And let's snap that back in. And I can probably just go to the 3D view now. And have just that. And now we'll add a little bit of grunge to this, and that will be it. I just want to show you, though, however, if you decided, you know, you could come back to this layer here, and you could say, you know what, I'm going to put height back on. I want it coming up a little bit, or I want it going down a little bit. All right, either way. But I'm going to leave that off. All right, so let's do, we got the trim and the text, whatever. Let's do a, paint, uh, a fill layer and uh, do dirt. So we'll just make this dark. And we'll do black.
block mask the generator we'll just do a dirt generator we'll just throw some general dirt on there right like that i'm fine with that because it's kind of an older book we can uh, label that as dirt we can do another layer let's let's do something weird let's do color and height and roughness bring the height up a little bit bring the roughness down a little let's go for a dark bloody kind of red and that's exactly what we're going to do i'm going to add a paint layer and over here in the alphas i'm going to search for um i don't know is it spill no uh stain i think yeah and let's see what this looks like here we drop something like that on there and i can come back here and i can adjust the color if i want it more in your face like that uh, i don't know why i'm doing this but just because it's fun to do and uh we could uh just do anything grab this one let's go back to the paint layer here and just see if, if anything like this is something we want yeah all right there it is yeah all right cool and how about uh we'll call this blood and of course we can simply go like this and say no i'm not doing that but we are going to do that for now uh, we just might do that and then how about maybe one more a fill layer um, the color and uh, roughness is going to be pretty much all the way up maybe a bit of height um, and dropping it down and a black mask and a fill and here we'll use a grunge and then just find a grunge that would work with like little holes or something you know do that that's a little bit much uh, all right i'm not gonna do that that's not oh geez uh let's try that all right oops let's just drop that in a little bit just for some more little bits of damage you can do anything you want here, of course, and uh, get it to look, get it to look good and all. We can also, now that I think about it, come to this paint layer. And I can use that. We can come to the eraser. Actually, maybe we'll go to the uh, brushes now. Brushes. We're going to take a dirt brush. Take this dirt brush, and you know you can get rid of some of this and do stuff like that to scrunch it up a little bit even the uh, the, the uh, trim there and in here and that's that's pretty much it all right there's lots of things you can do but that's that's pretty much what I'm going for and we'll change this just try out different lightings and see uh, see how you like them. All right, and there's your old book. Don't forget to save that and then uh, export the textures to uh, to Blender. And I'll do that another time and bring it in, and then I'll probably do a few books. And in the end, probably if they're stacked up, you're going to see mostly that. I'll just do a couple of them on the side. So. so there's a quick way to do a book. Very simple, very easy, and lots of fun. All right. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.